what's up how you doing so today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different i'm going to be watching and reacting to the movie anchorman as a news producer I actually got this idea from a comment on one of my last videos telling me that i should play this game actually what game was it let me look real quick some sort of like some sort of news game not for broadcast that's what it was called um this person mike porter commented saying that i should play that game and do like a reaction of it or whatever and that's a good idea but it gave me an inspiration um for doing like a movie or something kind of as a trial run to see if this is like a format that's like good that people want to see so i decided instead of doing that game first and spending like 20 30 dollars however much it was i would spend four dollars and rent the movie anchorman and see how that goes because it's like the most popular like tv news tv show slash movie that i could think of um, I have seen this movie once a long time ago. I truly don't remember a single thing about it. I don't remember the plot. I don't remember the jokes. I don't remember anything at all about this movie. So I figured it would work out well because it's kind of like I'm watching it for the first time and getting a reaction because I truly do not remember anything about it. I'm not really going to be judging this, obviously, on authenticity because it's a comedy. So it's not meant to be realistic, but I'm still gonna react to it as somebody who actually like knows what it is like to work in TV news and maybe I can sort of give a little bit of interesting commentary. When people believed everything they heard on TV. When people believed everything they heard on TV. Are you trying to tell me that now there's distrust in the media and news? That couldn't be true. And in San Diego, one anchor man was more man than the rest. His name was Ron Burgundy. What San Diego's, I wonder what their market is. TV markets, like you want to be closest to number one, which is New York City, which is the most people. I don't know what market San Diego is. San Diego is 28 in 2020, which is good. That's a top 50 market. It's a top 30 market. I'm in 43. But what year was this in? The 70s, okay. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find what that market size would be. But I feel like it would still be high, like it would still be in the top. It'd still be in the top 30, I would presume. <laughs> yeah, that's how all of our anchors actually uh, prepare. They just start screaming. Well, not many people know that about the news. The studio is actually terrifying right before a show. It's just anchors screaming. Channel 4 News with five-time Emmy Award-winning anchor, Ron Burgundy. Cham Kine Sports. Why, why don't we do these anymore? This really fun intro of showing off all our anchors and showcasing them. Why don't we do that? I want to do that. That's that gives it so much character. Now we just go straight into depressing events with no pizzazz. Shame. Now it's 82 degrees in our fair city and compare that to 48 degrees in the upper northwest and 38 degrees in the Middle East. How did they do weather before green screens? Because that just looked like a, like a poster or something behind, I almost said behind Michael Scott. Behind Steve Carell, whatever this dude's character's name is. How did they do that? How did they do weather? When were green screens invented? So many good questions. His name is Nutty the Squirrel, and he's three years old. How about that? <laughs> that squirrel can water ski. That was their kicker, the squirrel water skiing, which is funny because the kicker is like the happy little story at the end of the show. And like the directors and other producers know me at the studio as like, the person who, like, the producer who loves her kickers, because I do, they're my favorite part of the show. And I'm just, I'm happy. I'm happy that we got to see the kicker in this newscast. And I'm glad it was animal related. Almost all of my kickers, if I can make them animal related, they're going to be animal related. For all of us here at News Center 4, I'm Ron Burgundy. You stay classy, San Diego. I just had a rev my high school, and I'm pretty sure my college newscasts, a lot of the times, the anchors would stay would say, stay classy at the end of the broadcast. Like, stay classy CHS, stay classy Rutherford County. That's what they would say. I never cared, like as a producer, how they signed off on the show, like whatever, you're just saying goodnight, how you say goodnight, I don't care. But I never realized that they did it because of this movie. Learning so many things, and I'm five minutes in. Morning, everyone. Uh, Here are the stories we're gonna be chasing today. 
It looks like Ling Wong, the rare panda at the San Diego Zoo, is pregnant. This is a big one. Now, this could be the big story of the summer. Network is going to be wanting plenty of coverage. So, fun fact about that. So, I'm assuming that's their news director or assistant news director or executive producer, one of the three, some sort of manager. That was their morning editorial meeting where they talk about what they're going to be covering for the day. Um, usually, in those, reporters would pitch stories instead of a manager just like walking in and being like, this is gonna be our main story of the day. I mean, if there is something really big that happens, obviously they'll say like, we need to cover this, but reporters are going to be pitching stories in that meeting and there will be a group discussion about stuff as opposed to the manager just being like, here's the coverage of the day. Um, and talking about like networks uh, wanting to take, wanting that coverage, networks do ask for um, the packages and video and stuff that uh, this local stations get if they if it's like a big enough story that they want to put it on network television CBS CNN Fox NBC whoever owns the station or whoever is affiliate or not owns whoever is affiliated with the station um, they will take the local news coverage of big events Mr. Harkin I was just wondering if you knew when my office would be ready well, that might take some time. For now, why don't you just grab a desk in the bullpen? You can use my office, and afterwards, maybe we can go to lunch. They get offices? Is that like a, is that like a top 30 market anchor perk? All of the anchors at my station just sit in the newsroom at their own desk, like everybody else. The only people with offices are the news director and assistant news director. I'm sure Wes here is just upset over finishing second in the ratings again. Ooh. Oh. That's completely uncalled for, Burgundy. You know those rating systems are flawed. They don't take into account houses that have uh, more than two television sets and other, other things of that nature. I wonder how many stations are in their market. We have three in ours. I wonder, I'm assuming they would have more than two. Once you hit like the third and down, it's kind of like those sort of matter a little bit less, unless they're like really, really close and they can also be in the, the competition for the number one spot. The rivalry between stations is, is one and two. The rest are just sort of, they're there. Like I guess with the sports team, you have your rivals, you have your main rivals and then you have everyone else. You still want to beat everyone else, but it's the, the main rivals that really matter. You know how kids are. Anywho. Oh, he's the managing producer. That's what his sign says. What the crap is a managing producer? Is that the executive producer? I'm assuming that's executive producer. I've never heard of them being referred to as a managing producer, though. The Channel 4 News exclusive. Brian? And to watch. The mood is tense. I have been on some... I don't know how they did that transition. I'm assuming... Wait, did he say this is live or no? There's not a live bug. Well, I'm on the scene. With a channel board. Yeah, he says live. Okay. This is so nitpicky, but I'm just gonna say it anyway. First off, I don't know how they had the over the shoulder graphic become full screen and then become a transition between the shot of the anchor and the shot of the live shot. I don't think that's possible, first off. Second off, he went like right into it, like immediately into his discussion as soon as it went to him. And we all know when you're watching the news and there's a live shot, there's that really fun like five second delay where the, the reporter's just like, thank you, Ron. There's a delay from the producer in the IFB of the uh, reporter. You cannot just hop right into your story like that. That is it's unrealistic, anchorman. And I know we're all about realism here. There's also no lower third with the reporter's name and there's no live bug to indicate that it's a live shot. So, you know, just all sorts of inaccuracies. That's gonna do it for all of us here at Channel 4 News. You stay classy, San Diego. I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> Usually the last slug in a teleprompter, like you don't retype that every day. So when there's the thing at the very end where the anchors are signing off, it's gonna be like the same script every single day. So there's no need to go in and rewrite it every single day. It's saved in the template of the rundown. So there would be no reason for there to randomly one time be a question mark because there'd be no reason for somebody to go in and change it unless they did it as a prank. 
or things were just different in the 70s because I don't know how technology worked back then. I don't know if you can save your rundown templates like you can nowadays. But... I love lamp. Do you really love the lamp or are you just saying it because you saw it? I love lamp. I love lamp. Who doesn't love a good lamp? I think it's an interesting choice to have the person who is very stupid in this cast to be the meteorologist because that is the only job as an on-air talent where you don't get a prompter like you don't you ad-lib the whole time and you actually have to like go to school to study science to be a meteorologist because you actually have to like read all the different information and graphs and whatnot I don't think this guy could walk up in front of a camera and ad-lib three minutes worth of weather. Hey -o! Hey -o! Hey -o! There he is. There he is. <laughs> that's an interesting thing that they have, like, the four of them, and that's their news team. And it's the, the anchor, the sports anchor, or sports reporter, meteorologist, and then just a reporter. Is that, like, is the, is Paul Rudd like a senior reporter? Is that why he's part of the news team? Do they only have one reporter? It's just the four of them and then you got the new lady and she's not part of the team because she's a lady or because she's new. How did this news team form and come to be? What are the standards to get into the news team? Because I get that you have your chief meteorologist, which I'm assuming is Steve Carell, even though how, how could he, how could he possibly be the chief meteorologist? I don't know. Sports anchor. Usually stations don't have that many sports reporters, so your like sports director would he's probably the sports director. Your main anchor. And then a random reporter. The I guess the three of them make sense, but the reporter's throwing me. I feel like I have proven myself as a journalist. That dude reminds me of Jimmy Kimmel so much. Every time he pops on screen, I think Jimmy Kimmel is in this movie. If you want to throw down in fisticuffs, fine. I've got Jack Johnson and Tom O'Leary waiting for you. Right here. They're just you chilling just in the, the middle of the I street. Alright. Like there it is. What where are the rest of the cars? I love poetry. And this is a busy glass of scotch. San Diego. And of course, my friend Baxter. Here. How is well, no one has now this is happening? Excuse me. What is happening? Is he gonna Excuse throw me? the dog? What are you doing? That's how I roll. He might have survived that. You could like drive down to the like waterfront and look maybe I thought he was Hey, it's Jimmy Kimmel. I put brick on, but in, unless he's tracking a storm front, he's completely useless. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. Oh, hello. Just want you to know that if Ron does not show up, I am ready to go on. Sweetheart, you and I have had this discussion a million times. There's never been a woman anchor. Mr. Harkin, that person, the managing producer. Why is he the only manager that they ever show? Except random Jimmy Kimmel guy. I don't know what his purpose is or what his job is, but like where are the other managers? If your lead anchor isn't showing up for their shift and you're about to go on air, I feel like that's a discussion that multiple managers would be having to like figure out who to fill in. But also, you have multiple anchors and you can just say like, hey, can you fill in what, who, who are the five o'clock? Who's the five o'clock anchor or the four o'clock anchor or the noon anchor? There are more, there's more than just the six o'clock news. Is that all they have? At this station, is that all they had in the 70s? Is just one? And say, okay, fine, they only had the 6 o'clock news. But you would still have to have other anchors to be able to fill in when Ron's not there, when he goes on vacation, or whatever. He can't be your only anchor. You have to have others. And even if you don't, you have to have other people capable, like, like uh, for us, we had um, an anchor not be able to go on for some reason. A lot of times, Especially like, especially on the weekends, they will have a reporter fill in. What about Paul Rudd? Paul Rudd is apparently their senior reporter, I'm assuming, because he's in their little club and their little group. Can he not? Can he not anchor? I'm so confused about Jimmy Kimmel's position. Is he a producer? Made off with over $20,000 from an area bank in a daring early morning robbery. She just said that somebody made off with money after a daring robbery. Typically, for most local news, you don't really use adjectives like that to describe a situation happening because you're not really supposed to interject any sort of opinion. He was quite a jumper, too. Why do they only have over-the-shoulder graphics? They don't have any lower thirds. They don't use any video, like, playing over the stories. 
They don't seem to ever have any sound bites or packages. The only video they've shown was that squirrel video in the first um, newscast that we saw as the kicker. Everything else has just been over the shoulder graphics or that one time they did a live shot. How are you a number one news station without any sort of other stuff besides over the shoulder graphics? Did they not have those in the 70s? What, what was news like in the 70s? Was it like this? We also don't have credits anymore. I, I guess that was a thing that they used to have in news and we don't have it anymore. That's kind of sad. Like nobody really gets credit except for the on-air talent anymore. Cause if you go on any sort of news website, typically if you go to like meet the staff or whatever where they list off the staff, they just list on-air talent, anchors, reporters, meteorologists, and nobody else is ever listed. So, you could work at a news station and doing any other job, like being a producer, and never see your name anywhere associated on like the website or on air. All right, let's do this. Hey, if you're gonna have a fight, then don't forget Channel Two News with me, lead anchor Frank Richard. You dirtbags have been in third place for five years. See. The, the other ones don't matter as much. Third place. Tours run red with Burgundy's blood. Yeah, yeah! This is about a quarterly activity where all of us new stations gather together. We grab our respective weapons and uh, we just brawl. That's actually really interesting, the old teleprompters. One of my uh, executive producers actually was telling me about how it used to be when they had to use those. They had these big long machines, like what you're seeing here, where they would like have to write on or type out on paper and like tape all of the lines of paper together and that's what made the newscast. And if a story was killed or they needed to add breaking news or something, you'd have to type it out and then like add it or remove it to what was already there and that is crazy to me like now if we need to change something quickly in the prompter you just go in and click on the story real quick retype whatever and save it and it updates in the prompter or if you need to add a story you can just add a new line and start typing in it and it will update when you save it or you can just click a button and it deletes it completely out like it's so easy now and it blows my mind how they used to do it. That seems like it would be such an awful process. Really? A lot of hustle. I liked it. Dump out! Dump out! Their control room being, like, overseeing the studio like that, it's very interesting. Um, we have two studios at our station. One is used to shoot this thing called Coast Live, which is like a morning entertainment type show. And there is like an area where you can see into the studio from another room overhead like that, but it's a conference room, it's not a control room. Our control rooms are like actually back in a completely separate part of the station and we just watch everything on monitors. You don't actually get to see into the studio. Is there an anchor man there? Hold on. This is killing me to do this. I'd rather slit my throat. Hello? This is why you have more than one anchor. Why? Is that such a hard concept for this movie? And I'll be down there! And I'm going to look good. Gave up too easy. It's always a long fall from the top, isn't it? Easy, Wes. I've been waiting to say this to you for a long time, honey. There's literally a cop right behind him. Why is he just why is he just watching? And Ron and Veronica didn't stay in San Diego long. Um, isn't a panda being born? Isn't that like the biggest story and what the networks want and everyone's just filming Ron Burgundy and this woman make out? You stay classy, planet Earth. Carry on my wayward son. Oh, okay. Sweet crumb. 
Well, that's done. Well, obviously it's a comedy. Obviously it's not meant to be realistic in the slightest. It's an absurd type of movie um, with a star-studded cast, a lot of famous people in this movie. And like I said, I didn't remember like any of this. It's interesting, I guess, to watch a, a movie based off of TV news because that's what I do. I didn't think it was particularly funny most of the time. Like the only person I thought was funny was Steve Carell's character. Whatever, to each their own. I know this is a very beloved movie. I know a lot of people think it's hilarious. I don't. I'm sorry. But it does raise some interesting questions as a journalist, like, who has only been in the news world in this day and age. Like, I, I have no idea what it was like back in the 70s. And it kind of piques my interest to, like, go back and try to watch old archived newscasts and see what they were like back then just because i'm curious and i know there was a lot of tv change in general in the 70s not just with the news but just as a whole there was uh quite a bit of shift that happened in that decade with tv anyway i don't have like i feel like i don't really have a ton to say to end this video <laughs> i still want to know what jimmy kimmel's job was though what who what what was his purpose what was his job I know his name isn't Jimmy Kimmel, by the way. I know that's not Jimmy Kimmel. I don't know who it is, though. Anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can give it a like. You can also subscribe to me. Um, if you like this type of video, like me reacting to this kind of thing, then definitely let me know in the comments and I can look into more, uh, more things that I can react to. Or if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments. But I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, guys. <laughs>